Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Man's Nostalgia, where we revisit everybody's favorite shows, movies, and games from the mid-90s to mid-2000s. Don't worry, we will take the bullet. Uh, this week, the people have voted. And they have we, spoken. They have spoken, and they wanted us to watch Hook this week. Hookers. <laughs> because that's the only oh, thing I thought it was. Talking about I'm our really favorites. curious if Justin was like, hey, you know what they're going to say? They're going to they're gonna introduce Hook, and I'm going to say, we watch Hookers. I was severely disappointed when this movie was not didn't have any naked ladies in it. <laughs> you saw Tinkerbell, you're like, here we go. <laughs> now we're and then thinking. got disappointed. Uh, I found some stuff later. <laughs> okay, so this movie came out in 1991. It's the uh, third Spielberg movie we've watched. And oh, Spielberg directed. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, Spielberg directed this. It's, it's also very the whimsical. third, the third uh, John Williams movie we watched. Two separate, not all three the same movies. Uh, for Spielberg, we watched Ready Player One, Jurassic Park, and this. And John Williams, we watched Harry Potter, uh, Jurassic Park, and this. So right, and cool. Star Wars. Oh, and Star Wars. So four for John Williams. Thanks, Justin. Oh, wow. Ding. <laughs> okay, I'll add it. We're ding. doing that. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, this came out. Uh, this is fun facts. Da, 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 da. Fun facts for Hook. <laughs> like, not as strong as my DBZ. It wasn't as strong as your DBZ. Uh, but, uh, but I practiced for that one. That was this, off the top of my head. But this movie was a lot stronger than DBZ. So we had that going for it. All right. Uh, I have something to say <laughs> about this do. when we get to the well, plot we'll, of the there. movie. So John is really pissed at us <laughs> <laughs> about DBZ. Um, no, there are some really good fun facts. Um, if you want to start, I'll, how about let's stop all the cameos. You just want to go for there? Well, do you want to talk about like what Peter Pan meant? Oh, yeah. For okay. All yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so I never really watched um, the animated movie of Peter Pan, okay. but my sister had the uh, play musical, like a VHS of it, really creepy hook and everything in it. Maybe I'll put that in the audio, huh. or maybe I'll put that in the video. It's it's weird, <laughs> but uh, so that was my kind of my background with, with uh, Peter Pan. Um, so was it like the. Uh... Broadway version of Hook? Yeah, they had a couple of music. I, no. I, don't, I don't know if they were Broadway. So the, the play has been around for a long time. Um, typically, the, the, the person who plays Peter Pan is a woman. Okay. Because it's supposed to be like a little boy, right? So voices are supposed to change and everything. Yeah. Um, so Peter Pan is typically played by a woman. I think it was played, I don't know her name, but I'm not going to ask. Kathy was Rigsby. The, was the Tinkerbell in? So, so the Tinkerbell is a flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put that in there too. Uh-oh. It's always just a little flashlight on the ground. They just play like a little charm, a little chime, whatever it comes by. Um, Kathy Raceby played it. <laughs> Kathy Raceby, I think, played it. But anyways, um, yeah. So uh, I remember that, but that was kind of my only experience with Peter Pan, other than this movie. And this movie was a lot. I really liked this movie. I was into this a lot. I, I think I like Tinkerbell a little bit better in this movie <laughs> than a flashlight. <laughs> well, it's a little short, short shirt she's wearing there. All right, what about you, Justin? I watched the movie when I was a kid. Uh, I saw Hook 2. So I've seen the original Hook Peter two. Pan. Is there Hook 2? Hook 2. Oh, also. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I watched the original Peter Pan, uh-huh. the movie, and then Hook 2. And then Hook 2! <laughs> Return to me. All right. What about you, John? Um, I know the premise of Peter Pan, but yeah. I didn't watch any of the Peter Pan movies. Okay. So I didn't watch like the new Peter Pan that has come out i didn't watch hook and yeah. i didn't watch the animated one yeah um the i newer ones, the story of peter newer Pitt. ones i haven't really seen either <laughs> so fun facts let me go ahead and list off some of the cameos just so we can get those out of the way before we get into like, the other fun facts okay right. uh so there is a scene okay so the first scene when they are flying to england right they're on the plane and it's really bumpy so over the intercom you can hear under, the cat under pan am which under is pan am a- <laughs> <laughs> right 
<laughs> no, <laughs> not in business was, anymore. Pan Am was an actual airline. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but it was symbolic. Actually, yeah. there's a phone about Pan Am. Pan Am actually went under uh, out of business two months after this movie came out, or two months before this movie came out. So it was a little awkward, a little fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Salt in the wounds. Probably there was a lot of kids to throw baseballs a... <laughs> on top. So in that scene, you hear the pilot saying, let us see your captain speaking. We're, we're experiencing turbulence, right? Uh-huh. That's Dustin Hoffman, who played Captain Hook. Huh. Yeah, I think it's all part of that whole, like, is this a dream, is it not? Yeah. Um, Tinkerbell takes him, and they're floating across, and you see two people kissing. When the, when the fairy dust falls under them, they start floating up in the air because uh-huh. they're kissing. Happy moment. That is George Lucas, the director of Star Wars. Yeah. And oh, Carrie, that George Lucas. And Carrie Fisher, Leia from Star Wars. <laughs> oh, that, that Leia. <laughs> Isn't that oh, weird? Okay. Uh, They're Jimmy, kissing. Yeah. <laughs> Are they actually kissing in that scene? I don't know if they're just like very, very close to each other. probably very close, but really, isn't that weird? I, just I don't know. I always feel like George Lucas is like a father figure. I know they're close to the same age. It's pretty random. <laughs> Very weird, it's right? So weird. I mean, I mean, George why, Lucas. Why this movie? I don't know. George Lucas and Spielberg were actually really good friends in real life. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Buffett is one of the pirates that steals Peter's shoes. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, you probably noticed, was the youngest, the granddaughter that he ends up marrying. Uh, Steven Spielberg is in the movie as one of the pirates. Uh, the man who gets put in the boo boo box <laughs> with the scorpions. Yeah. That was unnecessarily dark. Yeah. You know who that is though? <clears throat> Glenn Close, the woman Glenn Close, who is the uh, ma- name the, the the main person of Novacore in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Huh? What? Yeah, <laughs> weird, right? <laughs> uh, wow. Da- okay, so a couple more almost people that were almost casted, right? David Bowie turned down the rose. James Cook or James Hook. <laughs> you I think that was a good it. idea. It would have worked. Uh. I think I think Hoffman did a really really good job. Um, yeah, I, I mean I agree. Uh, Tom Hanks was supposed to be Peter Pan. Okay, could have seen it, right? Uh, that, is a young Tom Hanks. Yeah, yeah. No, I see. That, that's where I disagree here. Okay, because I still I see Tom Hanks as a big kid. Right. Well, I wouldn't. Say, but but that's the point. So it's it's like Williams. okay, so it would be like the Tom Hanks that was in Big. Yeah, now, I'm I'm cutting like they both would, in line here. They both would have been great. This I is think. personal preference. Sure. Okay. I mean, I don't, okay. I wouldn't say he was. He wasn't offered the role. He was considered. So and I think it would have been great yeah. without. But I, yeah, Robin Williams in this is just perfect. Yeah. Uh, a couple more. Uh, Donald Sutherland was supposed to be or was considered for Hook, who uh, is prof- or the President of Snow in uh, the Hunger Games movies. And the last one is Joseph Mazzello, which you probably don't know, but he was um, considered for the role of Jack, but was turned down because he was too young for the role at the time. Spielberg, however, promised him a, f- a role in a future film, and that became he became Tim in Jurassic Park. Oh, so, right. Yeah. yeah. There you go. All right, so those, those are just some, okay, like... Hey, would you rather be Tim in Jurassic Park, or would you rather be... Definitely Tim in Jurassic Park. Yeah, Jurassic Park. <laughs> I mean, considering how much money Jurassic Park made and everything, yeah. like I feel like that's a better. It's way definitely a more famous movie. It oh, is yeah. definitely a more famous movie. Uh, okay, so who wants to say the plot? This one. I guess I will. Okay, go for it. All right, so uh, we start. We kind of get in the idea that um, you know, is it? It's it's Peter Panny. Banning. Banny. Yeah. Okay. Good. I thought it was Did you Panny. Say Panny? <laughs> That's why I thought I was like, is it? Are they saying Panny or Banny? I was like, it can't be Panny. They just added a Y to the end of Peter Pan. Yeah, your friend's Peter Panny. It, it can't be that lazy. <laughs> right, right. So he's, I guess he's a lawyer. He's a, yeah. He got made fun some, of when he some was kind of like merger school. lawyer or something. What I said, he got made fun of when he was. In <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He kind of like he kind of like goes through like yeah. yeah. All right. So anyways, he's really uh, obsessed with his job. He missed his kid's uh, baseball game. He's he a sends like a he sends like an intern to film it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, so they're going back to England because uh, his grandmother uh, Wendy. Well, not his grandmother. Yeah. Well, but he, his, call, he, like calls his he, he calls his wife. He calls her grandmother. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which is pretty normal for married people. Anyways, and she and that. she did adopt him, kind of. Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. But anyway, which is so weird. they're going back because <laughs> we'll get into it. Which is really if weird. She take. <laughs> She takes in a bunch of orphans anyways, yep. and they're naming like a hospital wing after her. Mm-hmm. And you see kind of the dynamic already of him and his kids. He's pretty he's very strict. He doesn't like uh, you know, them acting out like that. Like he's always doting on them, uh-huh. like saying, uh not doting, like correcting them, like, hey, stop doing that. Hey, that's dangerous. Yeah. You know? And all that. So he's really, really controlling. And it kind of all ends at him snapping at his kids when he's trying to take a call. And yeah. his wife's like, Hey, you gotta stop doing this. Throws the phone out the window. 
And then their kids get kidnapped by Hook. Yep. So Hook leaves a um, message. Yep. So a uh, bunch of stuff happens. Tinkerbell comes, uh, takes them to Neverland. Uh, he meets he meets Captain Hook. He says you they him and Tinkerbell make a uh, pact. They got three days to make him back into Pier Pan. Yep. He gets taken by the mermaids to the Lost Boys. Uh, Lost Boys send him through training. Uh, he figures out how to imagine. Blah blah blah. He turns into Peter Pan later. Uh, he goes back to uh, find his kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, him and Hook fight, and everything ends up great. Yep. I don't want to get into too much detail because there's a lot of stuff. Well, we're going to. Yeah. You know, we'll get we'll go in a step by there's step. There's a lot here. of little details. Yeah. Obviously. Um, yeah. Okay. Let, let's. Good. So, did you like the score? Oh. Man. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's play it's the John score. Williams. John. It's so good. John Williams and Steve. So good. Williams and Spielberg. It's like, oh, it's never bad. It's fine wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. It's great. It's fine wine. It's fine wine. <laughs> it, <laughs> no, the score. The score is great. Uh, very whimsical. You kind of get the feeling of Peter Pan, especially uh, when he flies. Yeah. yeah da, 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 once da. he becomes Peter, which, okay, is an hour and forty minutes into this movie, is yeah. when he becomes Peter Pan, which is a long time. And this movie is two hours and like ten minutes. Yeah, two hours thirty minutes. Two hours and thirty minutes. Which, yeah. Okay, so oh, were y'all mad that it took him so long to get to Peter Pan? I was mad how long the movie was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I may guess a little bit. But I mean he went I never felt that bored with it. You know, there's never a scene where I'm like, oh, they could take this part out. I thought... I mean, I guess there there's is. A, there's a few parts I would take out, yeah. but I thought they did the build-up really, really well. Because if he just got there and then 20 minutes later he became Pan, yeah. I think it would have killed kind of the, the vibe of the movie. Yeah, the would, suspense definitely lifted up. There was a couple scenes. Like, do you think they needed that, like, food scene in it? I think that yes. was a... I love that scene. Why? <laughs> that I mean, it was a good... But did... How did it progress the story? It, along? it showed him as he was progressing because he then all of a sudden he had imagination. He started to kind of feel. He started to look the way that, or he started to be the way that you need to be in Neverland to survive. He's not there yet. Yeah, he's yeah. working towards. But I mean, there are scenes they don't need. They don't need the little girl's musical number. That was kind of weird. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, they don't need. Um, I guess it's the Tinkerbell. It. Perfect move. Other than that, Tinkerbell. Oh, <laughs> Tinkerbell becoming big. Tinkerbell pan makeout session. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, we'll get to the, we'll all get that to stuff. That. We'll get all that stuff. All right, let's start at the beginning. Um, First scene is is a play oh, right, right. of Peter Pan. Yeah. So I had a question about yeah. this. So the story of Peter Pan, how did it get out into the world? So they explain it, but it's in like one quick scene. They yeah. pretty much say that the um, – and you don't know if it's true. It's when Wendy is talking to Maggie, the little girl, uh-huh. and she said the author of Peter Pan – Loved my story so much that he made it into a book. Yeah. And that's how she said it happened. Would okay. you explain why she would have money and... Yeah, I, I was stuff. wondering that. Yeah. I was like, did she write like a book about the adventures or anything? No, she's saying that the guy who actually wrote the Peter Pan story wrote it based on her life. Okay. Yeah, so... Which is it, kind of a cool concept. It is a cool concept. It is. Absolutely. So then they... Uh, then, okay, so he misses the foot baseball game of his son. Kind of a jerk. He shows up like, all I have here is, damn, Peter is a super dick. <laughs> he is. That's he what says, I wrote. <laughs> he sends an intern to go film his son play baseball. Um, his base, or his, he strikes out or whatever. And then they get on a plane to uh, England to see one of the, like you said. And like I said, fun fact about Pan Am. Which the, 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 the daughter like, draws a picture of the plane crashing. <laughs> no, Everybody it, else it's, has parachute. it's his son. The son oh, it's a son? Yeah. Oh, the son daughter's brother. showing the picture. Yeah. And... <laughs> <laughs> he's like, look, we have parachutes. Where's mine? You don't have one. <laughs> and he's like on fire. And falling. the, da- the dar- <laughs> Maggie, the da- Maggie, the dar- is like smiling. Yeah, yeah. Like she doesn't understand it. She, she thinks funny. She is adorable. She's an adorable little girl. Yeah. They get to London. The first <laughs> scene, they go into the they go into the uh, the house. And Maggie well, Smith. No, the first the first thing they open the door oh, and the yeah. guy screams. Remember, you're in England, land of good manners. Toodles. It's snowing! He's <laughs> <laughs> laughing. Dude, the kid actors in this were not bad. Like, they were good no, they actors. Weren't. No, they were pretty good. Um, do you want to hear, I, I agree with that. Do you want to hear about them now? Sure. So, girl plays Maggie, doing absolutely nothing. That was, Hook was her only movie. Guy who plays Jack did, like, one or two movies after this, but nothing, like, big. Now, he is, like, a defense lawyer, and he, like, worked under Bush and Obama. He's like a genius, and like like he's like a he's like a crazy like really like high up Republican, and he's even though he's a Republican like Obama hired him to do like 
like be on his team. That's cool. Like this guy's like really ridiculously smart. So yeah. no, neither of them are acting, but pretty cool. Um, they look like they have good lives. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I think I mean, Robin Williams went on to be pretty they're big. They're the too. anomaly. Huh? Robin Williams went on to be pretty big, too. Uh, I don't know about that. Mm. Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he walks in and you see Maggie Smith. Totally. How about that sexual tension between her and Peter? <laughs> that was so weird. So weird. <laughs> boy? You so, can feel so, it. Hello, tell, boy. <laughs> tell the, the story of like what Wendy is to the Peter Pan. Okay, like, so yeah, so if story. you don't know. Um, the story of Peter Pan, like She's the, the OG actual... bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, he, he used to go visit her window, creepy, and her and her little two brothers, Michael and John, used to go on adventures together. Um, but as, but he doesn't age, and she does in regular time, and so, like, he'd come and visit her once in a while, but she got older and older, to the point where she was too old for him, which is a little, I mean, a little superficial if you ask me, right? She does say, doesn't matter. <laughs> she does say in the story, though, that she was half expecting him to come and break up her wedding. Weird. <laughs> right? I mean, he's she like, said that in the yeah, movie? She, she said that in the movie. When she, I don't fa- when, that. She, when she reveals to him. Would she he, marry the, the crazy. Probably Toodles. I lost my marbles. <laughs> <laughs> probably Toodles, yeah. Uh, I guess I gotta settle. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, so he finally comes back. She's too old. Her granddaughter is sitting in her in, in in the bed that she used to sleep in. No, laying there. She's asleep at this she's point. She's asleep. Okay. All right. This is really creepy. And then Peter kisses her while she's asleep. While she's asleep. With no, nothing. Just oh, I'm gonna kiss this chick. <laughs> right. Sexual right. assault. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, so yeah, so I guess that's where the story of Peter Pan ends. This is where it picks up, saying that because of her, he decides to stay. And marry her and become a dad. Yeah. So there's always and he forgets t- that he's actually Peter, which Pan. is ridiculous. <laughs> so I mean, a, I don't know how you can forget. There's a scene where he, where uh, Wendy's talking to him and she goes, "What's the first thing you remember?" And he goes, "I remember living at the house of this with my parents." And he goes, "You were 13 by then." Was Peter never alarmed? 12. 12 I'm sorry. He's like, "Was you?" Ding. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. He's like, "Was Peter never alarmed that he uh, he doesn't remember anything?" Uh, before the age of 12. <laughs> that seems a little sketch. But uh, then the kids get kidnapped by Hook. Well, they're, uh, they're at this, uh, they're this at event. event. What is right. the event? I don't even it's understand. It's for all the... Or- it's like... it's they're, they're making a new wing of the hospital and they're putting it in Wendy's name. So it's like a thing for Wendy. So Wendy's famous. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, she, and they show all the orphans that, um, that like she helped... Oh, okay, and, that's what that was. And Toodles was the first kid that she adopted. Okay, but he was a lost boy. But nobody knew yeah. that. Really, really well, like thought out. I think the plot of this. You know what I mean? It I would mean, make sense it, that it, she would it, bring in. Yeah, she was the mom when she went in, in the movie. Right, right. So it would make this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I asked you a question. Yeah. And you said, "I go, is this based on the animated like story?" And you said no. Like the animated movie. The animated movie, Right, yes. so the animated movie was a Disney movie. Um, this is not Disney. Which so. made this whole entire story famous. Like, that was the thing that made this famous. Sure. Well, I mean, there's always books and stuff. But yeah, well, yeah. For, the, for the mainstream media, mm-hmm. sure. Um, and so, so what they, they kind of took uh, tributes to that. We kind of talked about the compass beforehand. Um, they, they, there's a, in the movie, the old animated movie, there's a, there's a compass. They show that. There's some, there's some shout-outs to the cartoon some shout outs to the uh, play and some shout outs to the uh, books. Okay. So they kind of took a little bit of everything and kind of combined it together. Did um, they get in trouble for taking anything from the movie? I don't think or so. Or was it also in like the other media? I think, it's, I think it's one, yeah, I mean, I think it's just one of those things that's so ingrained that people just kind of expect it. You know what I mean? Okay. One cameo I forgot. Uh, when the kids get kidnapped, they talk to the police inspectors in the house, right? Mm-hmm. The main inspector is uh, Phil Collins, right? The, the rock star. Yeah. And uh, he had a very tight... So he was on set for two days. Collins expressed concern in an interview afterwards that some of the film's publicity suggested that he was starring with Dustin Hoffman and Robin Williams <laughs> <laughs> when he was only a small camel. And so conceited. he had to like, keep like telling people, no, no, I'm just a little bit, because he didn't want people like, to go thinking that he was going to be a big movie. He was in most of the movie. And he didn't want people to think that like, all of his scenes got cut. <laughs> like, he wasn't a good actor or anything. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Conceited. So, yeah, right? That's funny. Um... Yeah, so so then we get uh, so then Wendy oh, tells because yeah, yeah. Peter doesn't remember right. uh, that 
like Hook even exists. Right. So he doesn't believe that this is actually Hook. That, they, like, they, say it's the a, they say it's, it might be like a prank based on like the family and the origins. Yeah. Knowing Which that makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. It does make a lot of sense. If your kids are kidnapped, you'd think like, and you get a signed thing from Hook, you're like, okay, someone's just being like this a sick is joke. stupid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, these were natural reactions. Yep, yep. Very thought out, like I said. Um, so... Let's kind of skip to Tinkerbell coming in here. Yeah, Tinkerbell comes in. A little fun facts about Tinkerbell. So... Well, he gets told he's Peter Pan before this. Yeah, and he thinks he's, he's crazy. Yeah. And then, like, but it's funny. My, one of my favorite lines is she goes... I half expected you to alight on the church and forbid my vows on my wedding day. I wore a pink satin sash. But you didn't come. Grandma? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, this little, is scarring? A little weird. <laughs> oh, man. It's so good. Uh, so then Julia Roberts comes on the, on, the, on, the, on the stage. Which is great. She's great. great part. All right. But a couple of funny things. So <laughs> Robin Williams and, and Steven Spielberg nicknamed her Tinker Hell <laughs> because she was difficult to deal with. <laughs> Given really her work, like think about like her work conditions though. Like she was pretty much in front of a green screen. Nobody was around her all day. You know what I mean? Except for that one scene. Yeah. But yeah, they call her Tinker Hell. Apparently, she was like a huge diva uh, because she was like in the air all the time. Yeah. Uh, she had an assistant that her sole responsibility was to clean her feet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apparently, she's just like like she was just like out of control. I, I also was read that she ran was, away from the set. She did run away. So she she got married. To, uh, or she was, she was either, no, wait. She, she fled from her wedding to Keith or Sutherland, right? Uh, you know who that is? Yeah. 24 guy. 24. Uh, it was, when her wedding was called off, and she decided to avoid the press by hiding in Ireland, and, uh, Steven Spielberg got pissed and threatened to fire her if she didn't return to the set immediately. Why would you mess with Steven Spielberg <laughs> like that? Like, at that time, like, he was, he's oh, yeah. big. I mean, he, this is after, like, Jaws, e. everything. T. Yeah. Oh, not Jurassic Park yet, but but he was already he was already an institution by that. He was time. already a well known Schindler's List. I think was after he was an institution. Before, yeah, he, he oh, was yeah, a absolutely. well known name yep. in the entertainment business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So interesting. Um, and then he takes her to Neverland, and um, he as soon as he gets in, like those sets are awesome. Man, the ship, the ship, the costumes. Great. Yep. Yep. It's pretty great. It's so elaborate, and it's it's cool to see something like this because now it'd be all be CGI. You know what I mean? At least to an extent, which can be done. Oh yeah, really no, well. They wouldn't yeah. have done any of this, uh-uh. but knowing that it was what it was, it's really cool. Um, and then you get introduced to Smee, who's pretty great. Yeah, Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins. He's great. He was great in this. He was also great in Super Mario. <laughs> he was. <laughs> What, what have, you seen, with, say? have you seen Super Mario, the movie, the live action movie? I have not. Woo-wee! It's it's a bad movie, it's but, real bad. <laughs> but he's a good Mario. He's he's a, yeah. He, he, what he works with, he does fine. He regretted it hard. He said it was the worst From, decision he ever made. They made a live action Mario? Mario movie, and it's 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 real bad. Like you have to watch. When it. did it get made? Like in the late eighties. They pretty much took the name and did nothing else with it. Like they had a Bowser, they had a Luigi, they had a Peach and a Daisy. But other than that, there's no similarities. Was there like any powers or anything like that? No. They were just plumbers. They, like, they get sucked to a brick, and it's like an alternate world where people are like, Here's how dinosaurs. bad it was, John. The, their last name was, is Mario, Mario, and Luigi Mario. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. That's how much they knew, how little they knew about It's Mario. about an alternate world where, oh people are, where people are half dinosaurs, and they had to All like, right. This like, is depressing. Let's move on. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Okay. Why did you guys watch this movie? It was Mario. I wanted to see it. And then I saw it was bad. <laughs> yeah, he was Mario. I wrote down he was Mario Mario in the Super Mario movie. Mario Mario. <laughs> Luigi Mario. Oh, um, so now he's in Neverland. And uh, you meet Mr. Hook. Mr. Hook. Which Dustin is pretty cool. Hoffman. Dustin like, Hoffman. Like, just how shiny his hook is. Like, oh, yeah. Just, just that, like, kind of iconic thing. And his mannerisms. Like, he's, like, a perfect hook. He, and he nailed it. And he was all over it. So he, like, his, like, friends, like, call him, like, Gene Hackman calls him Hook. That's, like, his nickname now. Mm-hmm. He, and he, they, you know, they could have, like, you know, kind of brushed off and just kind of done, well, but he, he really, I think, embodied what, like, Cartoon Hook was. Yeah. Because that's and, a really hard character to get perfect because yeah. he's so over the top. Right. 
all I have to go off of is just this movie because I don't know anything about like the cartoon mm-hmm. hook. So did he meet that like persona really well? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, like it's like what I think of when I think of Hook. Yeah. 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 Like I don't like, even picture the cartoon. Which one did usually. you see first? Did you see this movie or did you see the cartoon? Do you remember? I don't remember, but I mean, like I said, I saw that play a lot, and it's the same kind of character. It's like yeah. this over the top, like almost flamboyant captain. Okay. And he like nailed it. You know what I mean? And Shmi has done really well too. Shmi has done well. But, yeah, so, they, they're both perfect. Peter Pan's, uh, he's in Netherland, and he somehow ends up on the on the ship. Yeah, it's kind of it's where he wakes up. Yeah, which is weird. You think if Tinkerbell was like leading him somewhere, they would him right to lost anywhere boys. else than yeah, the ship. exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Peter Pan comes out. He he admits because they they show his his kids and they say. I really want a war with Peter, and he's going to come now because I have his kids. Yeah. And then Peter reveals himself as the pirate, and Hook's, and then like, but he's like really out of shape. Hook's really disappointed that he's out of shape because he is not the Peter Pan he remembers. Yeah. And he gives him three days to become Peter Pan. Which he could have killed Peter John's, Pan. John's argument. Right is, then and there. John's argument. Is, and ended everything. Because last week we made a joke. No, or we talked no, about how. No, no, no. I, I want to say this. Okay, okay. Good, good. So, you argued <laughs> that Frieza, the last episode, could have killed you. all of them <laughs> right at the very ice. beginning. Uh, and then you were like, he should have did it. But here, who could have did it? And he didn't do it, so <laughs> he didn't kill Peter Pan. Here's my argument. He for that. wanted a fight. Here's my argument for that. Okay, all Hook wanted was a fight. Frieza wanted in- immortality uh-huh. to beat or to beat Goku. Okay, and also to kill them because okay, so they beat the Ginyus. He wanted so, to beat Goku to prove that he was better. So than Goku. that that's his priority. Instead of immortality, instead of being the Jin Yu's, that's his priority. Because it's very hard to tell. <laughs> Hook's, Hook's, Hook's motivation is very easy to tell in this movie. All he wants is Peter at his prime and to beat him to show that he's the best. And that's everything he does is for that. He just wants revenge. He wants revenge because he took his, ho- he took his hands. You were, okay. I'm going to say some more stuff later. I'm going to say some more stuff later. I get it, John. Your crappy show. We destroyed it. <laughs> You're trying to find holes. I'm not it's trying so to find holes. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to say that yes, you the are. argument that you made last week uh-huh. is perfectly valid. It's the exact, <laughs> it's the exact same concept. I'm not going to lie to you. There are holes in this movie, and we'll get to them at the end. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Uh, so during this first scene with all the pirates, um, apparently there was some pretty excruciating um, scenes that took like all day, and they had like 300 plus cast members. So Bob Hoskins, three hundred plus cast members just for that one. Just for the pirates, yeah. Just for that one scene. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. The There's a lot of pirates. Yeah, it's a lot of pirates. Uh, it wasn't three hundred pirates. It was probably three hundred people working set, the yeah, whole entire sure, set. Sure. Bob Hoskins bought beer for every single one of them. Isn't that cool? cool? What a guy. Yeah. What a good guy. They're probably pints because he's English. <laughs> probably so. <laughs> That's even better because pints are bigger. <laughs> so, so true, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for describing it is to better. me. <laughs> Here's more beer. <laughs> okay. He, he leaves and gets started in training, but he meets all the Lost Boys, which is pretty great. He's, like, getting chased around, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, he, like, lands, and he like, always, like, plants on him. And the big guy, uh, Thudbutt, as we found out his name was. His name is Thudbutt. He's the From fat, a piece of cheese. He's the fat one. <laughs> uh, his name is Thudbutt? Yeah, I'll go over. There, there, the only reason I know that is Why? I have a th- I have a fun fact, and it says... Rajan, I'm gonna butcher his name. Rajan Hammond, in parentheses, Thudbutt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go into that scene later though, because it's, it's really cool. But Thudbutt. His name's Thudbutt. How He's, is how is that actor doing now? I don't know. I didn't look up, I didn't look how Thudbutt was doing. But uh, <laughs> I feel like you have a resume and you put on there. Played Thudbutt. <laughs> you probably could get much. Uh, just, that was me. I played a lost boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in Hook. But he said that really funny line, who's the shrub? <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> I've heard that. It's good. Um, and then they say bangerang. And bangerang is an actual word. Do you know that? What does it mean? Bangerang is actually Jamaican slang for uproar, disorder, or disobedience, which makes yeah. sense. Oh. Okay. Isn't that cool? Yeah. 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 Good All stuff. Um, so then the first scene with when he's like kind of like getting fought and everything, you see... There's this really cool scene where Rufio 
uh, has the sword, and then he like goes right at Peter Pan's face. You know what I'm talking about? Like right there. So no one believes he's Peter Pan. No one believes. None he's of Peter the Lost Pan. Boys right. believe he's. But Peter you know what I'm Pan. talking about? That scene yeah. where he has a sword. It literally goes like an inch from his face. Yeah. It, it looks like it's almost impossible to film. So how they filmed it was they they uh, they did it in reverse. So they started it there, and he says, "You're dead, jolly man." Backwards. And then he like goes backwards and like does. The, isn't that cool? Really. And like winds up and then he's just, man, like, jolly dead, your. Okay, well, you'd well, have to say the whole word it'd be backwards. Like, you can't just say it. The... Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he did that backwards. So that came out. You're dead, Jolly Man. Isn't that cool? Good job, Zuko. <laughs> yeah, Justin just said the word backwards. Man, <laughs> Jolly, I could do that. Said it's backwards. Oh, man. <laughs> I was just thinking about it. Like, okay, how would you say it backwards? I know literally. Easy. <laughs> This kid could do it. I could. Just, just <laughs> say the last word you did first. Freaking jerks. <laughs> that's why Justin was not filming this Rufio. <laughs> no, that's, that, that's really cool. Is that cool? Yeah, that's really cool. Also, Zuko. Zuko. He's Zuko. Is he Dante Basco? Yeah, he's the voice of Zuko. How do you not know that? I know that. I don't in know. Air, in Airbender. Zuko. Yeah. Okay. Or 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 in the. Uh... <laughs> the live action no <laughs> no we don't that's not a movie we don't talk about that it was never made robin williams has to be wearing like a fat suit in this like they don't i couldn't find any like fun facts about it but he loses like a lot of weight pretty quickly because he's a pretty know, big maybe, gut when he has a tuxedo maybe he's just wearing his... baggy clothes i don't know i don't I think know it might be baggy clothes you think so i mean he hasn't been he's, he's never been like super super like ripped or anything well you know i but when he's like when he turn, when he puts on the peter pan suit he's like Skinny, but when he's like wearing his, I like think it's, his... I think like John said, I think it's clothes. Think so? Maybe yeah. this. I mean, they might put like a little prosthetic like gut on him. I don't know. Could be. All the kids, they're they cooked, quote unquote, cooked food right. that doesn't exist. Yeah. How does that even work? I don't know. They got to smell good because John, you <laughs> obviously don't have an imagination. Apparently, I don't. I yeah. use logic. Why? Like okay. you guys use on my shows. <laughs> <laughs> so during that that scene so they've ended up training him so the feast scene you're talking about yeah there's some pretty funny back and forth between him and rufio that what substitute chemistry teacher come on rufio hit a mat mong tongue math tutor pinhead prison barber mother lover nearsighted gynecologist in your face camel cake in your rear cow derriere Lion crying, spying, prying, ultra pig! You lewd, crude, rude, bag of pre-chewed food, dude! Make a ring, Peter! You man! Stupid, stupid man! Rufio, if I'm a maggot burger, why don't you just eat me? You two-toned, zebra-headed, slime-coated, pimple-farming, paramecium brain, munching on your own mucus, suffering from Peter Pan envy! What's a paramecium brain? I'll tell you what a paramecium is! It's a paramecium. It's a one-celled critter with no brain that can't fly. Don't mess with me, man. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, they had no idea what any of that No, brains. no. That was, that's probably what William's doing improv, I, I imagine. And then he says he's suffering from Peter Penn the Envy. <laughs> it's also good. Comes from a paramecium. What's a paramecium? <laughs> that guy right there. <laughs> a one-celled one goes, I can't fly. <laughs> uh... All, while this is going on, though, you have Hook brainwashing his kids <laughs> to hate him. So I, I, had a, I had a question about Rufio. So how did he become the leader of the Lost Boys? Pan mating. They, they assumed that when Peter Pan left full-time, he left Rufio in charge. Okay. Yeah. So Peter Pan knew Rufio. Which is weird because it kind of makes it sound like Peter Pan left when he didn't know he was going to leave for good. Yeah. But I guess he... He might have went back. He might have went back. He went back, gave it to him, and said, hey, I'm leaving. This yeah. is a chick. Me, me and her are going, you know, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay. Okay. I, I, I kind of understand a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, so... I just... What? Why don't they recognize him? Because he's old. He's no longer... You saw, a pic, you saw the reflection of him. Yeah. He doesn't look anything like that guy anymore. I mean, given it was two different actors. <laughs> 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 you're, you're, Remember what you're comparing said. a person that is not the same person to a person that's not the same person. Remember, remember what they <laughs> remember what Rufio said. If you're not a kid, you're an adult, which means you're a pirate. True. So they just assume the guy's a pirate. Yeah. 
Kill okay. the lawyer. So then, so yeah, he's brainwashing the kids. So let's talk about what Justin wants to talk about because I, you, you brought it up when you got here the Smee Hook relationship. They definitely played it like they were gay. <laughs> <laughs> so they actually did. Did they? Yep. In the in the thing, so they read the script and they're like talking to each other, Dustin Hoffman and Bob Husk, and they're like, because these are accomplished actors. Yeah, they're like. These characters are gay, right? Like you're picking that up too. And he's like, "Yeah." <laughs> so they go to they go to Steven Spielberg, and they're like, "Hey, these two characters are gay, like, right? That's how you written them." And he's like, "No." <laughs> he's like, "This is a kids' movie. They're not gay." And he goes, "Oh." So they like said like we kind of played it that way, but we also kind of played it as like just two like really really good friends. Bert and Ernie. But they Bert and Ernie did. <laughs> they Bert and Ernie did. <laughs> But yeah, so <laughs> Bert and Ernie did. <laughs> Do they sleep in the same bed, Bert and Ernie? No, they have separate beds. <laughs> the in the room? same bedroom, though. <laughs> hey, cost effective. <laughs> they probably take a shower together, too, to save on water. Yeah. Um, so, like I was saying, meanwhile, Captain Hook is brainwashing the kids to. Oh, Hook's suicidal. No, okay, okay. He's brainwashing both of them or just the boy? Just, well, I think her, his main plan is to do both of them. But Maggie's too smart for it. Yeah, Jack's dumb as well. Maggie rocks. doesn't hate. Well, Maggie doesn't hate his <laughs> but, dad. But dad. in real life, he's like the genius. <laughs> right, right, exactly. He this really makes sense, well. though. Okay, so not necessarily. It's still kind of silly that he brainwashes him so quick. Yeah, but Maggie doesn't hate his, her dad. True, it, that's her dad. But Jack has a lot of issues you yeah. know, with him. So True. obviously, you know, he's gonna be a little more. You he's know, got a lot of daddy receptive. issues. Yeah, yeah. So he's it's a, a new silly. daddy. It's very silly because this whole show takes place in, or this whole movie takes place in three days, and he goes, and then he finds the old hideout where him and Wendy and Michael and Peter, there's no Peter, John Aww. hung out, and that's when he figures out his happy thought. He remembers that he's Peter Pan. He has his happy thought that he, um, his happy thought is that the reason he actually went back was that he wanted to be a dad. It wasn't really for Mora. He just wanted to be a dad. Could have got it from anybody, but he chose Mora because she was there. And he kissed her. <laughs> she was just laying there asleep. <laughs> and then he thinks of happy thought, and then he starts to fly. And then he becomes Pan. One of my favorite, one of my favorite scenes in the. Well, it's a it really, is my favorite scene. It's a really good scene, especially when he's running. When he's, I don't know why I like that so much. I mean, it's kind of cool. Um, it's just, I guess it's the, it's kind of like the the build up they had, and yeah. then all of a sudden, boom! Now he's Pan. Right, right. So um, while we're going, while we're talking about him flying, so Spielberg does not like this movie. <laughs> you know, he does like, it. It's like one of his least favorite movies he's ever made. He said he was really disappointed with how it ended, like how the result of what he made. Right? Mm-hmm. He said that um, the young actors was really, really tough on him. They were like really hard to work with, all the little kids. You know? Yeah. Uh, he said that. I mean, this isn't really a fun fact. It's actually a pretty sad fact. But he said that he uh, was really upset. He wished that he had figured out a better, more um, revolutionary way to do the flying scenes, which I think they look fine. They weren't. They weren't bad. But the only times it was bad is when he was against the screen. Obviously, right. When he's out, when he's like on the set, yeah, in the forest, it looks great. Right. It's just when he's against the backdrop. But what else could you do? Right. But Spielberg movies at the time, you look at and you're like, how did he do that? You know what I mean? But you don't really see that in this. You're like, okay, I can see how he did this. He wanted to do yeah. something that was so revolutionary that. But he so he hadn't watched this movie since he made it because he was so upset about it. And then when Robin Williams died, him and Robin Williams and Tom Hanks were like, like a triangle of friends. That's like uh-huh. one of the greatest triangles I think ever. I would love to be part of that triangle. I want to Tom Hanks. I want to fill Robin Williams' spot. Tom <laughs> Hanks is like the grandpa of, <laughs> of yeah. movies. Yeah. And then, uh, but anyways, so after that, he uh, he tried to watch it, and he couldn't get through it because he was crying the whole time, which is really sad. That is really sad. Um, but he said that he's really glad he made the movie now because that's why he met Robin Williams and became really good friends with him. Now, here's the part of the movie I was not happy with, which I think this is the first part of the movie I did not like. Which was when, uh, so, you know, he, he draws the line, you know, he gets the sword back. He's the pan. He's, he's the pan now. Yeah, he's starting to remember yeah. everything. Rufio, all the, Rufio accepts it that he's the pan. But then, all of a sudden, he forgets everything. <laughs> he forgets about his kids. Forgets about his kids. Which, Peter Pan has kids? <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's like, she Weird. used to go, ah. And I'm like, why do you suddenly get so... Whoa, like, wait, 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 wait. Who did that? Is that about the Thermomark? <laughs> you're, 
you're doing a visual thing on a podcast. This is one of Justin's <laughs> obscure lines. <laughs> no, remember like <laughs> Because remember, he keeps, my favorite segment of the show. <laughs> he keeps talking to Tinkerbell, right. like, "Oh, are you sick?" And uh, he, it's like, "But he just put the smile in his mouth." Got all that. He he his his mouth. We all remember the scene, but you always just say the obscure lines. You know, what? I hate you. <laughs> just say it. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> why in the world? <laughs> I'm trying to move this on. I'm trying to figure out why they made him forget so quick, like that. so that she could become big. Make out with him, and then he remembers his wife. Because, but why he? Forget? Because because Julia Roberts needs one interaction in this movie with an actual person. <laughs> <laughs> it was also weird that when he became Peter Pan, he automatically had pointy ears. That was odd. Did you notice yeah. that? Yeah. that was, no, that was a weird. Yeah, I guess. Well, he also got his costume out of nowhere and it magically yes! fits him. Yes, he was wearing completely different clothes when he started flying. <laughs> when he well, and was, then when he ended flying, he was wearing Peter Pan clothes. You assume it's a little bit later on. I don't know why you assume. Why would you assume that? <laughs> it's magic, man. What do y'all think about the? Uh, so then we get into the fight between the pirates and the Lost Boys. What do you think about like them like walking through armor and stuff to put on armor? So great. That was cool. <laughs> it's pretty creative, right? That all, was all, cool. all the elaborate contraptions. They yeah, had. it was awesome. I really liked it. That whole fight, man, is great. It really is. Like, they charge up, and then, like, they fight, and they're like, that doesn't even leave a scratch on you. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't this work? <laughs> he uses spirit bomb great. for, like, 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> that, was, that was great. No, but, Peter uh, Pan hey. stands there, just yelling. <laughs> <laughs> and Hook is just like, what are you doing? Do you need an x lax Somebody What's stab him. <laughs> yeah. Uh... So no, instead, how they beat the pirates was throwing tomatoes, eggs, and sauce at the at the pirates. Oh, uh, you're missing and some. Still defeated. They also had marbles and reflective shiny oh, things yeah. in their eyes. I'm sorry. <laughs> very very all paint. Yes, because <laughs> that defeats people that have and swords that are coming that, to attack. The people. fat kid that rolled down the hills. You forgot about the fat kid. Yeah, he changed his form. <laughs> he became a perfect which, ball. Which, <laughs> He bent his legs very well. Can weird. you imagine if that came out now? Like, people were like, oh my god, fat <laughs> shaming. You know what I mean? Yes. So they're all fighting, and then Rufio tries to go up against Captain Hook by himself. Because um, Peter has to go save his, his daughter. daughter. Yeah. And dies, gets stabbed, which I thought was a really uh, Not pretty Peter. cool way to die. They did a good job with the, the fight scene between him and Hook because you could tell Hook was like so much better than him. Because I yeah, because like, Hook the whole kind of just taps his sword and then stabs him. Right. I'm like that would make sense in a fight. And the whole time, Rufio, it almost seemed like Hook was playing with him. No, <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. He was having some play, fun. Play fighting. <laughs> but I would say that Rufio looked completely out, like numbered the whole time. Like he played, he was very defensive the whole time. He's like batting his sword away, and. Uh, but no, I wouldn't say he was playing with him. I think, I think and Cook you know what he did? He killed him. him. He killed I think him. Cook was playing with him. <laughs> yeah, he, he killed him about a minute fun. and a half, not 19 episodes. <laughs> it didn't take 19 other sequels. Uh, that's a pretty sad Can I get scene. a ding there? <laughs> ding, you got a ding. Uh, that's pretty sad, though, especially... And then like, he says, like, I wish I had a dad like you. That's so sad. That was so, so then, So then Peter kind of backs off here. I thought this was a really good way to get Peter back to fighting. Yeah. So Hook uh, basically threatens, goes, I will continue to hunt you down, your kids. I will continue ki kidnapping yeah. them. He's like, your kids, your kids' kids, I will like keep going after you until you fight me for and real. Now, yeah, and now, Hook, now Pan's like, okay, now I have to do something about yep. this. Because now he's kind of provoked me. Right. But then it's kind of dumb because then they fight for a little bit longer. And then he goes, and then he has him pinned again. And he goes. It still doesn't kill him. Well, yeah, but then he goes, just leave Neverland. I was like, what? Well, well, if you say yes, like just leave Namek. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> what he said, John. That's what Goku said. He said, "Just leave Namek." John, do you and... really want us to go back down to that? <laughs> yes, we've already yes. burned you a few times. No, I'm going back down this this path. You become the Justin of, the, of this episode. <laughs> you know so you what I have? Completely, just, John. It's been a week. It. I think you need to get over it, man. <laughs> Honestly, okay. You want me to give you a benefit? The yeah. way that Hook dies in this is silly. Is worse than the way Frieza dies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Because he gets eaten by an alligator, kind of a Even stuffed though, alligator. It's a stuffed alligator, and he disappears when. But he, does uh, he die? I don't know. Well, you saw Hook too. Is he back? 
<laughs> and then the lost, then he like sends the kids back by themselves so he can say bye to the lost boys one more time. Uh, the lost boys were bad. He's like, you're gonna, you're never gonna come back, which is a pretty valid concern, meaning that he he's just gonna forget about him again, right? But uh, and he has to decide a someone to pass it on to. So here's a really cool fun fact. So according to the guy who played Thud Butts, <laughs> Rashan Rahman or Hamand, I don't know. Uh, the scene where Peter passes his sword was improvised. None of the cast knew who he was going to pass the sword to except for Rob Williams and Steven Spielberg. So the kids' reactions was general, like an actual reaction. Genuine? Genuine. That's cool. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. So they didn't know who the sword so was So did they know to. that here's that your, scene... Here's the sword just to be all the fat jokes. Did they know that scene was going to happen? They knew it was going to they... happen. They just didn't know who it was going to get passed to. Okay. Which is kind of cool. And then Peter wakes up next to a statue and he sees me. So is this a dream? Do we know for sure? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> well, I guess we saw not. Tinkerbell. I guess it's not because Toodles flies away at the end. Uh, he comes back. He's a changed man. He no longer needs his cell phone. And uh, he lets his and he he loves his kids. And uh, and then he gives Toodles back his marbles that he gets from Thud Butt earlier in the movie. And he flies away to Neverland. And they all look from out the window. That's how it ends. Okay. So uh would you have rather the movie ended um, without him flying out the window? I was thinking about this because it is left kind of vague at the end. Did he actually go to Neverland? Even Tinkerbell says, "I live. We live in like the uh, thing in between, between dreams yeah. and living." Right. Is it just his? Because at first you don't think it's his imagination. He really went there. Right. At the end of the movie, they now they start to introduce the concept that it's imagination, and they just throw that all out the window. So, do you think? It- the mystery would have would have been a better ending, like it. Not- I don't know. I, I want y'all to. I think I think a really good ending would have been him waking up, him climbing up the window, and then he's like, and then he's like, we don't know if it's a dream or not. And then he like see, and then he like realizes he has the marbles around him, and he gives it to Toodle. So it's like a hint. He's like, oh, was it real? You know what I mean? Like it's kind of like those movies I, that I like. Think it, yeah, I, I, I would have liked that. I wouldn't have liked him actually giving him to it. I would have liked it that he would have like found the marbles. Oh yeah, Maybe. like just in the house. Yeah, like he yes. was cleaning like, up right when yeah. he gets back. Yeah, that'd be mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah, that would be cool. Because, yeah. because that still leaves the mystery. Right. Yeah, you like, don't know for sure. You don't know for but sure. But I do like that it was very definitive. Yeah, he he went. But I was wondering if would it make people pissed off if they went the mystery too? What if like when he's in Neverland, he has to use like a top to figure out if it's like Neverland or not, and then he gets back <laughs> and the top's still spinning? Well, that's really original. <laughs> who, who would have thought? Top of my head. Top of my head. Oh, the top of your head. Maybe ah. it's the marble and the marble rolls or not. <laughs> yeah. It rolls right or left. Yeah, they just stops and it's spinning. It's going straight ahead. I just thought that was a weird thing to do <laughs> at the end of the movie with Shmi and everything because up to that point. I don't think there were any hints that uh, this wasn't real. Okay, what do y'all think? Who would go first? John? John is I'll go first. Justin always goes second, apparently. <sighs> okay. So, I, I felt like this movie had some holes in it. I liked certain concepts of it, though. I thought it was funny. I'm glad that it kept the... Uh, the storyline of like the Peter Pan story, yeah. like I'm glad that it continued it. I thought it was a pretty cool concept. That's pretty much all I liked. Okay. So I'm gonna give you half a point. Okay. Whoa, what? It's all right. It's hey, it's not his nostalgia. This, I get it. This, if is, you a, this is a vendetta. If, <laughs> no. If you didn't grow up with this movie, I think it's really hard to like. I get it. It's it's. Hook, bo- I, I know, like Hook is probably one of your favorite characters in this movie, but he bothered me. Ooh, okay. I don't like that. Whoa! What? <laughs> All right. Yeah, Hook's the Hook's what made it. He's the wow. Joker of the Dark Knight. Like he is the no. Yes, he's not in my opinion. Wow. All right, Justin. Oh my. Um. Okay. So fans, so I have a point because you like the idea, you like the sets, you like the premise that's Peter Pan, but you don't like the plot. <laughs> <laughs> Which is literally the premise no, of Peter Pan. No, 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 no. Okay. I didn't say I didn't like the plot. Okay. There's certain things within the plot I didn't like. Okay. What? I didn't like the imaginary scene. I, in my opinion, I didn't feel like it was needed. Uh, I didn't like the the girl singing. I didn't like the. I didn't like the very beginning of the movie really well either. Mm. Okay. Like with I. 
I know the concept of him not going to the baseball game was needed, but I didn't feel like anything else other than that was needed. Okay. So you're wrong. I felt like I felt like the, I'm <laughs> that's wrong. Okay. You're right. To, you have I right to like your the, opinion. The, the, the first opinion. like forty minutes of the movie were boring. Okay. Okay. And some of it wasn't needed. Am I upset? Opinion. Yes, but it, it's okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Justin. For one, enlighten me. <laughs> For once. I really enjoyed a, a movie yeah, that we watched. You give me more points than John. This is a landmark. John, you are you are just out of it this this week. He's really mad know, about maybe. dodgeball. He, or so dodgeball. I did that last time. Dragon Ball. He's really mad about Dragon Ball. <laughs> I did have some things I didn't like about the movie. I've already talked about them. Yeah. Uh, but like uh, you said, Chris, and you were completely right. That Thank book you. makes this movie. Yes. Completely. Absolutely. And. John, it might just be a byproduct of you not watching the original Peter Pan. I feel like you should have watched the original Peter Pan before you saw this movie. Maybe. Because I, mean, I think it would have got, given you some backstory, some love of the characters. Yeah. Because I didn't see this movie until maybe I was 9 or 10. I would seen the original Peter Pan. And though I didn't get all the references at first, I knew, okay, that's Peter Pan, that's Hook, that's Tinkerbell. Okay, it's live action, it's different. But now the build-up to Peter Pan, everything else, I was so excited. And even when I saw this... I watched this twice before this. I was still excited to see Pan again. Mm-hmm. Because if they had done it really early, it wouldn't have had as big of an impact. Right. I think. I, I did like Peter mm-hmm. in this movie. I, I, see, in my opinion, he made the movie. It wasn't Hook that did it. Okay. I mean, Rob Williams is always great, right? Yeah. So, Chris, I award you a point. Woo! All right. So, my, my thoughts on this. I... Um, yeah, okay, watching it now, I haven't watched it since I was like, I mean, I watched it like a couple months ago with my girlfriend, but before that, I probably hadn't watched it since I was like in high school, maybe younger. And yeah, I see there's some pretty glaring plot holes. There's some stuff that was unnecessary. I don't think it had to be two and a half hours long, but I think the acting and like the sets and like just the way everything was so thought out really, um, really made this movie like great i did really like the score the score is great i did right. like the score of the movie yep yep and i just think that um it's one of those it's a gem it, it's it's not very well received a lot i mean i, I know our fans all watched it, it has 28 percent though on rotten tomatoes which is very low for a spielberg that movie really weird right right and it did not make much money in this in the box office so it's kind of like one of it's those just, it's not a blockbuster type of right uh concept which is crazy because i mean you look at those sets you know the budget was crazy for it but for the time it just didn't make much money and it, you know it's just one of those things but i really enjoyed it i'm glad we watched it and i honestly went to this movie thinking i would hate it really i thought okay they're i'm gonna get you know i'm gonna have a list of things to say about it you know i'm gonna be grumpy justin again <laughs> right i loved it yeah I'm kind of i'm kind of sad it's not as well received as it is john i'm really surprised you didn't like this movie I just found it a little boring. Okay. All right. Well, you're wrong. You're but, wrong, but it's okay. But you get negative points I, because I you're wrong. Do, I do. <laughs> All right, so fan vote. All right? And the <laughs> no, we can is, do that. The we funny thing is John is that. going to make this. All right? Is John right or wrong? Yeah. Is John right about Hook I'm being bad? i Or is John wrong about Hook being bad? <laughs> no. I'm going to say, and I'm going to vote 200 times, John <laughs> is wrong about Hook being this bad. This is going to make some fake profiles. Yeah. Just <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, but yeah, we should I, watch more Peter Pan. What, <laughs> what I Peter disagree Pan with when it comes to Rotten Tomatoes, I don't think it should be twenty nine. Yeah. I think it should probably be around sixty. Okay. Sixty or seventy. Uh, <laughs> okay. I mean, I'll take it. It's fine. Okay. You're wrong, but it's fine. Okay. It's okay to be wrong sometimes. All right, Justin. What are we watching next week? We're, you I'm guys are about wrong this. about Dragon Ball Z. We. So. <laughs> I'm wrong I'm about of, this. <laughs> I'm excited about watching this, Justin. We are watching the Animaniacs. I am ex- very excited. About I'm really watching glad this I remember too. that. I watched this a lot when I was little. I don't really remember this show. I used to plop in front of the TV and watch the show. Came on, I think, before Freakazoid and stuff. Mm-hmm. Came on like around 4:30. It was like great, every day, right? I remember the it was theme. after school. Yeah, I remember the theme song. Yakko, Wacko, and Dot. Sure. Yeah. I remember. I still remember very vividly. 
uh, a lot of the a lot of the sketches they do, and they're pretty famous too. Like the uh, Yakko does the capital. Oh no, I think Wacko did the capitals of the United States, but Yakko did like the uh, yeah. the countries of the world. Hmm. I don't remember and everything. That. And I'll, I'll I'll save it for the okay. Uh, no, it's TV. cool. Yeah. So it's this was. Cool. I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited to learn some fun facts. And um, they're gonna redo it too. I heard make, that with Spielberg and everybody back. Yeah. Which is important because once again it's we're doing Spielberg. Spielberg. Yep. It was this his Spielberg. Spielberg right? It's his show. creation. He, really? didn't, he didn't direct every episode, but he like he produced it. He produced it, yeah. Oh wow, that's cool. But yeah, Animaniacs next week. It's gonna be really exciting. Yep. Uh, these watch, guys, they're hilarious. We'll watch season one, episode one through fifteen ish or so. All right. Um, hey John, if we wanted to see ourselves on social media, where would we go? So you can go to Another Man's Pod at uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We're gonna be posting pictures every single. Uh, week. So uh, you can also listen to us on uh, iTunes Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, um, Cast, Castbox. Um, but hey, if you have like a uh, question or a message, you know, yeah. an idea, message us. Um, I I answer on Facebook Messenger. Who you answer on Gmail? Right? Yeah, if you want to email us, you can email us at. And John, Pod. John does everything else. Yeah, pretty much ninety nine percent of the social media stuff. Yep. So, um, uh, shout out to Spotify Ideas. He's been posting, or she's been posting a lot of things when it comes to uh, the people that we've been listening to on Spotify. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I know we as a whole, we really appreciate it. Yeah, and if you guys want to like find out about new podcasts, you can listen to on Spotify. Definitely follow them on. Twitter, they always put up suggestions. Not just ours, yeah. but they put up a lot of good suggestions. So uh, We also have videos every Thursday that yeah. come out on YouTube yep. that Chris puts up. Yep. Uh, he does a lot of editing when it comes to – he does all the editing when it comes to he literally all of our stuff that we do. And, uh, I know we really appreciate it. So if you ever want to, like, yeah. email him, just – I don't want to do it. Sh- we'll okay. show some uh, old, old uh, play – Peter Pan play stuff in here so you can see how creepy it was. It's some creepy stuff. <laughs> but if you ever want to just thank uh, him for doing all of our editing, I'm sure he would really appreciate like an, uh, an email or anything like that. Thanks, John. Um, all right, guys. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week with Animaniacs. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>